It gives me a great pleasure to be with you all today here in Zanzibar at the fourth Aulin Intergenerational Retreat. Tanzania is the best place to have this meeting on many, for many reasons. We all know this is a country which has been at the forefront for the independence of Africa and which has inspired a lot of countries, a lot of political leaders, and how to do politics. Tanzania is a place where many peace processes have taken place. And I was very happy to hear again the anthem of the East African community because I've been coming to Arusha many times to attend those processes. Tanzania has given us, for Africa, the longest serving Secretary General of the African, or the, uh, the OAU at that time. And I think of Dr. Salim Ahmed Salim. Tanzania has al is also giving us a good example in terms of gender parity. What we have seen yesterday evening is very fascinating. I think this is the right path, a very um, irre irreversible path that the country is going through. So I'm really happy to be here today. I would like to congratulate my dear sister, President Samia Suluhu Hassan, for the honorary doctorate that she earned from the University of Dar es Salaam. Your courage, my sister, your dedication, and your achievement, which speaks for itself, has uh, led you to this well-deserved uh, recognition. Congratulations. It is vital we share experiences uh, leadership of our leadership journeys with the young generation. The, we, and especially to focus on the challenges so that we also avoid them. The intergenerational approach to deal with many issues that we are facing, I think, is the best uh, approach. So it's very important that we gather in this kind of a space, which should be our safe space to discuss on those issues. Our gathering is taking place at a time of great uncertainties for our uh, world and the planet in general. There seems to be a shift in the global balance, shift of world order, as some, as some analysts are saying. We can be sure of one thing, the world is changing. COVID-19 is said to have shown how unequal the world was. Well, some of us knew before COVID-19 that this world was indeed unequal and we we're fighting for a fairer world. A war, a war is taking place in another hemisphere. Africa is hungry. Africa doesn't have fertilizer. We have to change this. It surely is a wake-up call. And Africa should be in a position to use this opportunity to reflect and weigh in the world stage. And this can only be done with men of, and women of this continent. So we don't have time. We have to empower our women to take their place in this changing world. Overlapping crises are pushing countless Africans to abject poverty, inequality, unemployment, and insecurity. That is why the theme of this year's retreat is timely and very important. The risks of leaving women behind are far too high. The place that financial inclusion has in development is important. It is seen as a catalyst for development. It is about the improvement of livelihoods and build a more equal and sustainable future. In recent past, increasing number of African women are participating in the leadership uh, position, legislature, cabinet, and other decision-making arenas. What I have seen here in Tanzania, as I said earlier, is really encouraging. The major change resulting from women's increased participation in government and high positions is the erosion of the adage that women cannot lead. For her to lead, she needs her financial autonomy, bargaining power, increase of self-esteem 
We need to remove the many constraints that hold women back. We have come a long way, but we still have a long journey. Let me just pinpoint some of the issues that I think are very important if we have to move forward and we need to move forward. First, we must get away from the slogans and the facts that we have always been using in uh, our speeches to explain how women should be supported and should be having their place. It's important, but we have to move, to move on forward. It's now time, I think, for radical and measurable changes. We therefore need concrete actions. Women have to be seen, not to be seen lamenting on their fate, but leading the way to changing the course. Concrete actions that we agree upon with periodical progress reports are needed. We have to act. I invite our young women to aspire to better opportunity. There is a ladder of opportunity. We have to know that. Climbing towards opportunity increases our self-confidence. For the ladder to be not facing challenges, it has to be uh, it has to be standing on a firm floor. Not all ladders are safe. We need to make sure of their solidity. We need to be well equipped to participate fully in the development of our countries. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of education, and I have seen the depth and complexity of it as I have chaired for the last two years the International Commission on the Futures of Education for, for UNESCO. Skills, training, training and training. In Ethiopia, I started a presidential leadership program for mid-level leaders, whenever, for mid-level leaders. Because whenever we ask the question, why don't you promote more women to a leadership position, the classical answer is, where are they? We can't find them. Well, they are there. I have noticed yesterday here in Tanzania, they are everywhere. We have to look for them. We have a big asset in our women. They find men. They can find women easily. So we have, to, for this, to provide that certificate or whatever, to show that they have been trained, I said maybe it's good to have this program. And I have made sure that we introduce in this um, uh, curriculum, beside the broad-based leadership training that you all know, elements of women, peace, and security. And I'm well placed to, 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 to say it. Unfortunately, my country has gone through a lot, and women have to be on the forefront. If we had women trained as mediators, as insider mediators, at the gr grassroots level, peace builders trained for that, you know, they can stop conflicts from happening or prevent it to get to that level. So this has been introduced because, as we know, women and girls, women and children are dispro disproportionately affected by war. We had also added elements of etiquette and protocol. Maybe my background as, 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 a, as a diplomat has pushed me to that. But it's very important because the more you climb the ladder, the more you need to um, move in a very coded environment. And that codes, we have to know it. It's very simple. It's just a matter of knowing how we should behave. Mentorship, it has been said. It's very critical. Again, in Ethiopia, I have introduced a mentorship program for uh, female students third and fourth year, those who are ready to go to the workplace. Um, so um, I think that is going on well. We need to have that kind of mentorship. I chose university because I thought it was critical, but we have to have it in many areas. Because mentorship, to my view, has to be a national um, program. 
as, uh, soon, as soon as I uh, came to this position, the first thing I said, and in my acceptance speech, I have mentioned women and peace uh, so many times, that I definitely do not want to be the tree hiding the forest, because behind me is a forest, forest of women we have to empower. We must recognize that the capital, um, the driving force, talking about economic empowerment, sustainability, and financial inclusion. Uh, uh, as for the financing sources, there is a scope to build in a gender lens in both existing and new financing mechanisms and investments. We must also accel accelerate women's digital literacy as a matter of urgency given the enormous potential of e-commerce and digital finance to unleash their entrepreneurial potential. Otherwise, we risk deepening yet another gap, the gender-digital divide. We need to fight violence against women and girls in all its forms. I want to emphasize on all its forms, because violence against women, the worst of it is sexual violence, but there are many forms of violence, the visible and the invisible. How many times have you suffered of psychological violence, of undermining you, body language, or even the word that we use to just discourage women who want to, to express their views? So I think the pushback, as uh, Binta has said yesterday, has to be pushed back. Let us be clear. We have to make sure that uh, we are not given a position because it is politically correct to have a woman in high positions. We cannot be tokens. We cannot be boxes to tick to appear being good. We cannot put somebody, a woman, at this position and not giving that woman the means to deliver. That's also a kind of violence. I know some of my sisters have gone through that. So we have to be together to understand the complexities and to really address. It's extremely important. Uh, to my view. For this is um, a very good time to, to meet. Uh, I would just um, ask you really to use this retreat to get to know more uh, one another, to really uh, strengthen this network. It's very important. Aulin is the best continental vehicle for women to be empowered. Um, we have to move forward. 30 chapters is a good progress, but we need chapters in all our countries, chapters that work and chapters that deliver.